Hi, and welcome to our information session about inclusion at Jebel Ali. Our agenda for today is looking at who the team is across the school, the levels of support we offer, support across the school, the provision map, pupil profiles, we'll be looking at ELL, EAL and EMA, and the key terminology will be at the end for you. This whole presentation will be available on our web website if you wish to revisit it. Our team in primary consists of four inclusion teachers, myself included. My name is Olive Clancy, I'm the primary SENCO and Foundation Stage SENCO also. Um, we have four inclusion teachers and seven inclusion LAs. We work across Foundation Stage and primary, delivering support for children in class and also some focused groups outside of class. Our secondary team is made up of four class teachers and three learning assistants. We work from year seven up to A level. Um, we do in-class support. We also um, cover sessions, directed studies, um, which are sessions when children come out of class if they are Arabic or modern foreign language exempt. The identification process and referral system within Jebel Ali School um, is supported by parents um, first and foremost because we rely on your information sharing information with us on entry um, if your child is joining us and has a history of inclusion support in their previous school or a diagnosed need or they've had some external therapy it's very important that you share that with us and that we can start their support journey with you um, it's the quickest way to get support for the children and for us to understand what the child really needs. So we do rely heavily on parents sharing information and telling us all about their child. Um, when we have the information, we will take time to observe the child, to see how they're managing within their setting, get feedback from their class teacher, and then we'll decide if we need to do further observations or testing to build their pupil profile. Um, once we've gathered the information, we can put the child's name on our inclusion register and from there we'll be working with the class teacher, the parents and the child themselves um, to build their support plan. Um, Personalised support can be in the form of um, social emotional, can be academic, it can be physical, it could be sensory. So we look at all aspects of the child's development and we work alongside our school counsellor also. Um, if we feel that the child requires more in-depth support, we will create a learner profile for them that will outline all aspects of their support plan in one document. And that will be shared with parents um, and all people who are working with the child. If a child comes to Jebel Ali School and they don't have any prior history of needing inclusion support, or they don't have any formal diagnosis or identified need, but the class teacher feels that they may benefit from some additional support, then they follow what we call the PEBBLE process. So the teacher discusses their observations with parents and shares their feedback. They then collaborate with their year group teachers to see what strategies they can implement and how best to cater for the child in class. The next step is that they will fill out a PEBBLE form, which is um, an all about me form about your child and their journey in school so far. Um, that Pebble form is shared with our Pebble team. So the Pebble team consists of the deputy head teacher, the assistant head, the inclusion team and our needs based learning assistants. When we receive the form we review all the information about the child and then we decide on what action to take next. So. There is a decision as to whether the child will get some observations and assessment by the inclusion team or perhaps by the needs-based learning assistant. After a period of two to four weeks, we will come together and we will review all the information, observations, assessment data and decide on next steps for the child. So support strategies will be implemented. They may be class-based. It could be advice and support for parents. It could be referral to external agencies. Um, we may decide to put that child on track and monitor and see how those support strategies impact on the child's experience. Um, we might decide to increase the support and deliver some direct sessions from the inclusion team and we would put them in the Pebble Send category 
or we might decide they need to be directly placed onto the inclusion register where their support is formalised and from there we can begin their support journey with parents, teachers and the child. The inclusion it's, um, in secondary works in a very similar way, um, the process is very similar. Um, if a teacher feels that they've got concerns about a student, they will first raise it with their department and their head of department. They'll discuss what interventions can be put in place within the team. Um, after a period of two to four weeks, if they feel that the concern is still ongoing, then the department will raise their concern with the head of year. The head of year will then send out a document to all staff of that child, um, and it's called a, we call it a round robin. They will then gather information to see that um, if the concern is mirrored in any other subject within the school. Once they've reviewed all those responses, they take it either to um, the inclusion team where we will sit down and we will have a look at the responses and then we would decide on the next course of action or it may go, if it was a pastoral concern, may go to our pastoral um, team where they will look at it in the same way and decide next steps. If it is an inclusion concern, um, we will then go um, ahead and conduct our own internal assessments. Every part of this stage, from the raising of concern with the class teacher, will be communicated to you and we will let you know what the, uh, the procedures are and the next steps. If it is felt that after our assessments that we do need to move the student onto our register, we will then um, contact you and let you know who the link teacher is and we will go through exactly the same process in primary. Um, some children may have a learner profile, some may be a tracker monitor, um, but we will update you of um, each part of the process. We keep all our records on our central system and they are communicated with all class teachers at the same time. Um, across the school, if as a parent uh, your child's come into school and they've been here for a while and actually you feel that they are struggling, uh, of course you spend most time with them so you'll see them at home please do voice your concerns with uh, the class teacher directly in the first instance so always go with to the class teacher and there is uh, an email address there to raise those concerns that email will then be passed on to the relevant teacher and then they will contact you um, and you can also of course talk to the subject teacher do, during consultations evenings when they are advertised When a child's name is added to the inclusion register, we categorise their support into levels. And the levels are wave one, wave two and wave three. And that's our way of understanding the level and intensity and frequency of support that that child will receive from our team. And also in terms of the support and communication that we will be delivering with parents. Um, wave one the child's needs are such that they can be met typically in class by their class teacher with some differentiation and some support and suggestion by the inclusion team but without any direct input from us. Um, wave two, generally the children will receive some support from our inclusion LAs. They will be included in booster groups. Um, they may have personalised intervention programmes which they're working on and that we monitor. Um, they may have some external agency support. Wave 3 children tend to have the full remit of support in terms of in-class support for curriculum support at differentiation, both in the moment with the child but also at teacher planning level also. Um, they will have some perhaps focused sessions outside of class to work on their specific areas and targets. Um, they will have intervention programs and they most likely will have some support from external agencies. They may have Arabic exemption. They might have a one-to-one -one private hire LSA working alongside them. Um, the waves can change over the years. Typically children who may start at wave three will progress to wave two over time as the impact of the intervention is in place. Um, and sometimes down to wave one. Wave 1 children are track, tracked and monitored, but on occasion they may be removed from the inclusion register if it's deemed that they no longer have any additional um, support needs out, out with what their class might have. 
This tracker gives an overview of the type of support that we give to the different waves, wave one, wave two, and wave three. Um, it's not a complete um, It's not something that we stick completely to, but it's just to give you an indication as to what you might expect for your child's experience if they are in wave one, wave two, or wave three. We always rely and depend on the teacher's feedback, but also the parent's feedback as to what is working, what is making a difference. We also obviously check our data and we're constantly observing and monitoring the child to see which, which category they fit best into to meet their support needs. It is interchangeable, but this is just a rough guide. Once the child has been um, identified as needing support, we then place their name on our provision map. And this is our one-stop document that has all the information that teachers refer to um, are, and are very much involved in when we are putting this together. So we have our first page which outlines the wave supports and then the DSIB categorisation at the side. When we go into each year group, um, we have um, all the information that that, on that child in that document. This is update, updated three times a year. It's done in conjunction with the class teacher. And the things that are talk, uh, discussed in this meeting will then be reflected in the child's pupil profile if they have a pupil profile. So anyone can come to this document and say, this is what's happening in the classroom, this is what hap is happening with the LA, and this is what ha is happening at Wave 3 if they're having more specific intervention. So that's the first page of it. And then we look at the targets, and we review the targets, and then that feeds into our learner profiles. If a child is given a learner profile, and that is all children um, at wave three and some children at wave two. Here is an example of our learner profile. Again, it gives an overview of that child, quick information, their strengths, um, their areas of development, uh, their targets. We look at English, math, science and Arabic targets and we also encourage the children, depending on their, their age, to come up with their own personal targets. And there's some support strategies at the side which are very much come from the children and from the class teachers in terms of what they've seen in the classroom and what they and what works best for that child. We also have their their, their GCSE subjects if they're up, um, up the other end of the school and also if they have any exam concessions such as 25% extra time or a reader. Um, the, again, this is reviewed throughout the year and is, very, is linked to our provision map. We also have two extra groups that are in within the school that we monitor very closely. We have our ELL learners, so this is English language learners, um, and we also have EAL, and that is English as an additional language. We try and support as many of the ELL learners as we can. We have a, a very small team that can um, do that. The process of um, identifying those children can be found on the entry assessment so if a child has come um, for their assessment and we feel that they are learning the English language then we will put a plan of action in place for them. We may find that when a child comes into school that they need extra support with learning the language and a teacher very much following the record of concern in secondary and the pebble process in primary will do will go through the same system and refer that child on. Once they're in school um, and they've been either referred by the teacher or we fill on entry assessment, they're going to need some extra support. We use um, an online programme called Flash Academy, which allows us to assess the child to find out what levels they're at, and then it gives them activities for them to work through. Other support can come in the form of small um, support sessions, where we'll be looking at vocabulary, um, pre-teaching and reviewing what they've been doing in class to make sure they're understanding what's going on. Um, the majority of the provision very much comes from the in-class provision that the teacher plans for, um, identifies the child, plans for that child and delivers that support within the class. We also have our EMA group, our exceptionally more able group. Um, these students can be identified through data uh, when we do our CAT4 testing or our GL assessments, which are English, Maths and Science. 
Um, teacher may nominate um, a student in a class that's particularly good in, um, in an area. It could be a sporting area, you know, it could be art, it could be understanding maths, and they would put that referral through again. Again, it's exactly the same process of record of, not of concern, but they would refer them and they would put it through the Pebble process as well in primary. We also get identification through outside reports when a child has had an ed psych assessment. Sometimes it's picked up that they are um, working well in a particular area. We pick that up in class. The majority of the provision for an EMA child will come from the class teacher within their lessons. Again, through identification, working with the year group and putting in extension tasks within their lessons. We have a range of school clubs that they are able to um, go to and we also have the Dubai Enrichment League where they can go to competitions and also our in-house competitions. So we often get asked lots of questions about inclusion and you may have more questions after this which will be more than happy for you to get in contact with the school. Um, some of the frequently asked questions are if I have an academic concern about my child who do I speak to? In the first instance, you should always go and speak to the class teacher. So in primary, that's the one class teacher. In secondary, you may go directly to the subject teacher. And the website was um, a few slides back, sorry, the email address is a few slides back that you can contact. That will then get sent on to the relevant person and they will contact you. It may be a quick phone call or they might offer a meeting with you. Um, you don't have to wait till the parent consultations if you have a concern beforehand. What happens at the end of each year and how is, it, is the information about my child passed on to the next teacher? Every single year the inclusion team or pastoral team will meet with the next class teachers and go through the needs of every single child within that class and they will go through pupil profiles, they will look at the provision map so that the next class teacher is well informed about the needs that are moving up to her, their class. Um, we do this at the end of the year um, so that everybody is on the same page and the, the support can happen as soon as they start in September. Will my child always need inclusion support? Your child may not always need inclusion support, and as mentioned earlier, they may, they may move to, uh, between the waves. Um, and link to the question below, if your child does move between the waves, you, um, you'll be informed by your link teacher um, to say that after their intervention, they're actually moving down in waves, and this is um, what you'll see in school. Or after the um, intervention, we'd like to to work with them for a longer period of time and so here is their new wave and it could mean that they come with um, a pupil profile as mentioned earlier. What should I do if I need to speak to the team and it's before or after my scheduled meeting with the link teacher? That's absolutely fine, we have a very open door policy, you are able to email us um, and we will set up a meeting with you. Please don't feel that you have to wait to meet with us at the designated time that we've um, scheduled. If you have a pressing need and you need to talk to us, we are more than happy to speak to you and alleviate any concerns you may have. The most important thing to know is that we are here to help you and work with you to meet the needs of your child. So do feel, our door is always open, so do feel free you can contact us when you need to. At the end of the presentation, there are just some key terms, ones that we use in school that uh, we find that will be very helpful. We hope you've found the um, presentation informative and please do contact us if there's anything else that you feel you need further clarification on. Thank you.